Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to an Our Town Community Show with Ryan Sowers. Super excited to have my friend, Amal Poella, with us today. Amal, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing great. Well, doing we were great. talking before we went on the air, where do we go in 15-minute show? This is packed. So let's just open with a big lob pitch. Tell us about who Amal is, a little bit about your background. Background, grew up in Florida, uh, lived here in Georgia since 77. Right, that counts. People say, "Did you? are you from Georgia? And I say, no, but I got here as quick as I could. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm retired, and we're going to talk a little bit yeah, about that, I think. Yes. I uh, had a corporate career with uh, Procter & Gamble and Amico Oil, most of it in the oil marketing business, uh, but retired in the early 2000s and uh, did a little consulting, mm -hmm. but have been full-time retired for the last 10 years. Uh, I'm on the Lilburn City Council Yep. Been on there for three years. Uh, I am a very serious photographer. Yes, you are. Hardcore uh, a hobby. You can't hire me. <laughs> Please don't contact Ryan to hire me. I'm not for hire. But I do it. Uh, I, I took it up literally four years ago. I just thought, this will exercise my brain. This will keep me active. And it has. It's just, and it's turned into a, a tremendous love and an opportunity to interact with people. Absolutely. And your family and friends, uh, you, how long have you been married for? Been married 53 years. Congratulations. 53. Be 54 in December. Um, your wife will be proud of that. She is. You're proud <laughs> the, of, well, I was just saying, you remember the date. That's oh, perfect. I know. Listen, yeah. Oh, I've not forgotten it ever. <laughs> no, I forgot I her birthday once. <laughs> you can't do that. I learned that. Yes. Um, uh, two daughters, both okay. local, Great. married, their families, uh, two good sons-in-law. They're off the payroll, uh -huh. my payroll. Yes. That's good as a, as a dad. Yeah, yeah tell me that. But wonderful. Good. Four grandkids, three at Providence Christian Academy here, one at Barry College. Um, I am a proud grandfather. Have you been, you were you that. involved with their grandkids' lives? I mean, were you, have you, you? Well, that's the joy of they're here and yeah. have been here. You know, and so I know so many grandparents who have to travel across the country to see their grandkids. Right. They're just two miles and four oh, miles that's away. Fantastic. So I'm at every soccer game, basketball game, recital, So you've seen them grow play. up? I've watched them grow oh, up. That's I had my, one of my grandsons turn 17 yesterday. I remember the day he was born. Oh, man. Now I don't remember a lot of other stuff, but I do remember that. <laughs> well, you were telling me, I'm, I'm gonna hit on this for a second, because I think it's very important, but let's, let's use something you said in church you were thinking about yesterday or a couple of days ago, uh, of identity. Identity. Yeah, let, let's talk about that because that is a powerful thing, Amy. Well, um, it's such, it, it, well, it's the key to who you are, your, your identity. Mm -hmm. and, and people are so often uh, established by what they think their identity is. And, and here's kind of the basis mm -hmm. of it. Who decides your identity? There's really, I, I would contend, three different aspects of that. You can decide your identity. You'll think, I'm a winner, I'm a loser, I can do it. All those things that, that built, okay. Somebody else can decide your identity. You've got friends, you've got family, you've got a wife. Some people have got an ex-wife. Right. And they've all decided what your identity is. Mm -hmm. Or for me as a Christian, the Bible says, and God decides, what's my identity? Mm. And, and I would tell you that before I retired, uh, I worked for Amico Oil for 27 years. I was I had different job titles. It's not who I was. It's what, it's what you I did. did. What you did, yeah. It's what I did, but it wasn't who I was. And so when I retired, retiring was one of the easiest things because the transition didn't have to happen from being the marketing sales manager to nobody. I see what no. you're saying. But that, you see that with a lot of oh, people, though. I, I've got many friends who have retired or often retired the same time I did. And they, they didn't know what to do. They, well, I'll just play golf every day. No, you <laughs> won't. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, to me, I asked somebody, um, uh, not telling them about that, and they just said, you got to have a purpose. I mean, you got a purpose to get up every morning and you retired. You're, you're the most busy retired guy I've ever seen. You can't hire me. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I have no time for I, a I job. I got his number on speed dial. <laughs> Only I can use him in emergencies. <laughs> no, uh, but in all seriousness, so you, you delved in, you jumped into photography and these things. And, you, and I can see it in your face. You love what you're doing. I love it. Yeah. And yeah. so you're busy 
And, uh, you know, you celebrated, you know, if you don't mind me saying, you're 70, 76. 76. So, 76. So I got people I know 10 years younger than you that are miserable, <laughs> even 15 years younger, that retired. And they look like to me like, Ryan, I don't really know what to do because I have all this time. I am having the time of my life. I'm serious. I know. I and mean, you know, the photography thing, I, I have a phrase I use with people. They said, well, how long have you been doing that? <laughs> and I said, well, I started when I was 72. And they look at me like, and crazy? I say, I am living proof that you can teach an old dog new tricks. And, and remind me, you taught yourself, you had to learn this from Ground Zero, right? Hey, YouTube, <laughs> we're, we're on television here yeah. and YouTube's a piece of that world. Uh, yes, I learned, and by joining up with other photographers, a couple of organizations that exist here in, in the Atlanta area. Um, and so, you know, you interact regularly with your well knowledge, knowledgeable about a young lady sure. who does photography oh, uh, for you. She and, I are, she and I are good friends. She is, and, great. And you know, uh, I've got other people. So that's how you learn, is by interaction with people of a like mind. 100%, and you know, getting to, I see some of the photography that you do, and you know, all these, it's, you can just see the growth and it's, oh, yeah. uh, but you see, hey, I can see the growth. Yeah. You yeah, know, I it's mean, fun. But just, just experimenting and, and, and doing um, different things. So, but so right now, 76 years old, you know, so w these people seriously, they say, you know, I'm going to go just play golf every day or whatever. I mean, how, well, how do you, there's people listening now that are just kind of stuck. They're kind of stuck. And yeah. how do they get out of yeah. that where all the work's their only validation of their job? I, I think it's funny. I was, I was thinking about that and how many people out there know Pat Boone? Pat Boone is still doing ads. He's got to be 140, <laughs> but he's still, I see his ads. Anyway, his daughter had a song. She was, you know, a, an artist in the 80s, maybe. Sure. Uh, uh, Debbie Boone had a song, Find a Hurt and Heal It. Oh, wow. I'll never forget that. I love that song. But here was the point. Look for hurting people. Look for needy people. And look at it and think, I wonder if I could help with that. Find a hurt and heal it. So does that find that hurt and heal it? Let's say now you're 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 you've been in a job that's been your identity, your home, and you're like, so now what? But you have skills, right? You have skills. That's you what have I'm stuff that you can bring to what you know. You don't have to be a photographer. You don't have to get on the city council where you live or get on the HOA. Any of those things. Sure. What you want to do is step back. One, decide who you are, mm -hmm. and quit thinking you are who the company used to say you were. Sure. Then, uh, then start you know doing inventory. What can I do? There are there are tons of organizations. There are charities well, out people there. People need so There's much all help. that stuff. But what you find is you're energized by the the things that you do. But does that keep you mentally young and, and busy well, versus it, sure. versus just you know I don't know. I mean I if you don't get involved, whatever I would think that whether stay with your grandkids or, or or you know involve these associations. I'm sure you're continually learning, right? Am Use it or lose it. That's what <laughs> well, they say about your physical, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I think it works here well as well. So you got to stay on top. You got to learn something. Mm -hmm. You got something you don't. If you don't know about YouTube, get you know, find you, out. You, 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 you can, can learn anything. You can also get in all kinds of trouble. Don't go there. <laughs> but but seriously, you can learn. You want to be a carpenter? Yeah. Oh, I never thought of hire, buying a saw. Well. By golly. There's only 10,000 YouTube videos about woodworking. It is any <laughs> funny we go back uh, date ourselves, but you know, you know, the old car manual or whatever. Oh. You know, you could pull up a YouTube video on just about anything, anything, and go, oh, that's where the emergency brake is on this 2017 Honda that rental car. Like that's weird, but you figure it out. I just fixed the the latch on the dryer door. My wife said it, it won't come on, and I thought, There's, okay, it's a it's a whirlpool and it's got a latch on the door. I looked <laughs> at it now. I'm not an electrician. Right, I, don't know what right. I thought, okay, YouTube, Whirlpool, Latch, Dryer Door. That was a hard search. Four videos. <laughs> Four. Every one of them showed me, take these two screws out, lift this up, go to Doraville and get the switch. Got it. Did that's, it. Done. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> when, when, when I have people in parts of my life, they ask me all the time, well, how do you find so-and-so? And I'm like, go to this thing, G-O-O-G-L-E. <laughs> and or hence, you know, remember when they bought YouTube, which was one of the smartest things they did. But oh, yeah. how about, um, uh, you know, you're talking about mental fitness, physical fitness. How important are, have those been to you, or spiritual fitness, um, and keeping you so vibrant and, you know, 
I mean, goodness, you you give me a run for my money, and yeah, <laughs> I told you. Um, so, so you, you know, in all seriousness, yeah. are those things important yeah, yeah. to you for his They're, disciplines? They have always been. I mean, I've played I played sports in high school. I'm sitting down, so you can't tell how tall I am. <laughs> but I did play basketball. Yeah, I couldn't today. But uh, but I, I I started I played tennis starting in the 70s, mm. and played tennis all the way through. Played alta. Uh, so physical fitness, yes, you know, stay in shape, sure. don't, you know, don't get out of shape. So I did that. Physical fitness important. Mental fitness. Mm -hmm. uh, I was part of a church that we used to do ministry at two retirement homes and a nursing home. We mm -hmm. did it every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I saw folks who were all as old as I am now or, or maybe younger sure. um, who are not mentally, not doing well. Now, I'm not saying this is, sure, a, no, this no. is to cure everything, but... I decided I'm going to I'm going to start to exercise and that's what photography was. It was make, a starting make your point. Mind work. I said Stay. I'm going to learn all that new stuff. Right. F stops and ISO and and all, you know, shutter speeds. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but you had to learn it. But I learned it. Yeah. And now, you know, I'm very confident in that in that realm and but I know that that helped. I know it did. You know, everything's not as good as it was when I was 26 oh, sure. at 70s. I'm talking mentally, it's not. Yeah. I I'm, I'm just I'm honest with myself, but, but I got to believe it's a whole lot better than it might have otherwise been. But you said something before we went on air. Age is just a number put on us. It's not how we have to do I'm X, Y, Z age, so I can only do X. How, how old would you be <laughs> if you didn't know how old you were? I love that. I, I just, I've, I, that's not original. No, I, told I can't you. give credit to whoever I heard it from first. But it's a way of thinking, and it's a way of being honest with yourself. You know, I can't do physically some of the things I did 20 years ago. I know that. As a photo I was just out in the Tetons for four days, photography. If you haven't been there, find some time and go. It's a fabulous, beautiful area. But anyway, uh, near Yellowstone, you know, out there. Oh, fantastic. But, but, you know, part of it's in, on trails and, and, go, and, and I'm just smart enough now to know, you know what? I can't do that for right. four hours. Sure. I can do it for an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. Which is better than a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't even try, you know. Well, I mean, there's that, yeah. But, uh, so, okay. And then, um, you know, in terms of, uh, what's something fun? I mean, you're, you're telling me all these fun, you, you, you have something fun with your grandkids or your oh, kids man. that you just really, you know, that you enjoy. They had, <laughs> they had a powder puff derby at a, schools just started at Providence uh, here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did photography, I'm on the field. One of my grand, my, one of my granddaughters, who's a junior, at Prov is a cheerleader. Okay. So they had the boys scrimmage football. She was cheerleading. Then they had the powder puff derby. I know she knows nothing about football. I know that. <laughs> but she's also a doer and a joiner. She's, mm -hmm. she's officially one of my kids. Yeah. My grandkids. Anyway, so she signed up. Her friends are going to be in the powder puff derby. Here she goes. Uh -huh. She's out there. They put a jersey on her. And, and golly, I have not had that much fun in a long uh. time. You know, because she's running around. And when she was done, she said, Papa, this isn't as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> and great? I thought, yes. That is so great. It was so fun, yeah. It is. Um, it is. Think well, well, I'm thinking here as we kind of come to a close, believe it or not, you and I could, we, we could have our own uh, recurring sitcom. But what nuggets, you know, going back to his identity or whatever, is people are planning for their future or not planning for the future. You know, we're giving, we're giving this hour was one day at a time. But... What do you say to people who are watching or down and depressed and feel like they're, they're not of worth in any, anymore because of a certain age or part of life? Find out who God says that you are. Mm. I, that's what worked for me. And once I understood who he said I was and who I could be, then you start to work on those things. And it's not just some company or some person that puts you in a box. It's uh, a lot you know, God they, ordained and bigger than that. They don't know nearly as much as he does. <laughs> yeah. About he, you. He, he's your me, creator. He he knows. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely right. Well, uh, as always, my friend, we could do this and we need to do this again. But uh, Amal Poella, my friend, thank you for coming on the show. Ryan, it's great. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in, folks. And we'll see you again next time.